The genre of dark fantasy is an incredibly popular one. For the past decade almost, we've been watching the big rise in popularity of Game of Thrones and also the accompanying novel series that was popular well before that point, the Witcher video game series, and a whole bunch of other stuff in between that stuff after it and decades and decades before it. But every genre has a starting point, or at the very least a point where it reaches a popularity streak, where it it really strikes a chord with people and cements itself in human history as something significant enough to follow up on, whether through direct adaptations, sequels, or of course a multitude of inspirations. And for the dark fantasy genre, Conan the Barbarian is that popularizer. It is his incredible ability to strike a chord with audiences of the late 20, 1920s and the early 1930s, which has solidified him in his popular culture as an incredibly significant piece of work. And though he is not Robert E. Howard's first ideal take of doing a darker fantasy setting, as he had already done so with characters like Krull and Solomon Kane. Like I said, Conan was the popularizer. He's the guy who really struck a chord with the audiences, and the fact that this dude has had multiple different adaptations, dozens of comic books, dozens of video games, and a whole bunch of other stuff coming up, one of which is an Amazon television series of all things, is probably a good clue as to the impact of Conan. I mean, for fuck's sake, the next big popularizer of the dark fantasy genre decades later on was Elric of Melna Benet, and Elric was intentionally designed to be the absolute antithesis of Conan in personality and physicality, and was of course supposed to be a Conan ripoff initially until Moorcock did the aforementioned inversion. So, just as like a historical piece, I feel like reading Conan is something everyone should do because he has had such a profound impact on so, so many different things from big to small that it just feels kind of stupid not to go back and see where the genre really struck a chord with people during its kind of inception years. And Conan is a very interesting beast in the way it's both written and in the way it works. See, despite the fact that there are multiple different Conan stories, they are all out of order. Well, most of them. Basically, the way Robert E. Howard wrote Conan, he explained it as though Conan himself would appear to him in like a bar, and then Conan would regale Howard of his own adventures, and Howard would just write it down as though he was just, you know, in a bar drinking with his own creation. And many of the stories really feel like that. From the young beginnings of a dude who's only come out of Chimeria and is first being introduced to civilization, to an old king who has realized his own responsibilities to the people and the nation, Conan is a very, very versatile character who goes on multiple different adventures as a reaver, as a mercenary, as a thief, and all of them have their own unique tone, style, and they all feel really, really important, while also feeling consistent with the character. And this is probably one of the biggest strengths of Conan for me personally, because there are so many fantasy series out there that have like 20 fucking books, each of them 500 pages long, and each of them, to varying degrees, interconnected to some level. And so, just on that basis alone, it's really interesting and convenient to see a fantasy character who does have well over a dozen stories by Howard and then many, many more by other authors down the line, all of which can be read as standalone pieces and are usually only a few dozen pages long, while also feeling like complete narratives in their own right. And as you read these stories out of order or in order, either one is really, really good, there is that aforementioned consistency between the appearances. This really does feel like you're watching this dude grow and change throughout his adventures as you jump from various different points in his time. When you first see Conan, the inexperienced youth in the Elephant Tower, you really get the sense that this is a dude who will grow into the Conan you read in the previous two storylines, who's like in his 40s-ish years and has already become a king, except obviously much, much more inexperienced, and it all feels feels connected, but also completely standalone. And that's a really difficult thing to do, even for stories that take place over a chronological span of time, and Howard makes it look fucking easy in an out 
of order uh, type story. Conan is also, like I already said, a very versatile character. Because he is just a dude who goes around the world doing whatever he needs to to survive, he is a mercenary sometimes. Sometimes he's a reaver, sometimes he fights monsters, sometimes he's a thief, and it's all really, really interesting, and it's all very different. The Scarlet Citadel does not read the same way the Queen of the Black Coast does. Neither does the Tower of the Elephant read like the Phoenix on the Sword, despite the fact that they're all happening to the same dude and take place within the same world. And Robert E. Howard himself was a very interesting dude because he led the during, of course, the early 20th century. And this is an interesting time where the bedrocks of modern civilization were being pretty much finalized in a lot of ways. Because when you really think about it, a lot of the stuff that we have nowadays, it was all really laid down during the early 20th century. Cars, radios, cinema, uh, the way we construct cities, the kind of housings we live in. We're pretty much living in just an upgraded version of the 1920s and the 1930s in a great many respects. But the big difference between then and now is, of course, mystery. See, today we have the internet, and we have cataloged and analyzed and made freely available so much different kinds of information that the whole idea of, say, thinking that there could be a primordial monster somewhere on the bottom of the ocean would be absolutely ridiculous to a modern audience. But back then, where civilization had not yet truly evolved to our time, the idea of there being like a Loch Ness monster or an African tribe praying to like this malevolent primordial deity was still very, very possible. And it's this crazy sort of disparity between the civilization of Howard's time and the seeming primitiveness of lots and lots of countries in Africa and, of course, Asia that drew Howard. And that inspiration is very, very obvious throughout multiple storylines of Conan and even H.P. Lovecraft, who is a sort of contemporary of Howard's and who also really played around with the whole idea of civilization being threatened by primordial or barbaric forces that don't really fit into our neat little tight neat view of society. And Robert E. Howard himself was a bit of an eccentric. Now, there are a lot of debates as to whether or not Howard was crazy or depressed or if he was just a normal guy who was very eccentric. I mean, for fuck's sake, this is a dude who cut his shorts deliberately short so he wouldn't trip over them during a fight. He carried a gun around. He was kind of uh, paranoid about the fact that someone might have been after him. And he also had a bit of a complicated relationship with his own mother and his own family and with his own physical health. So this is a dude who lives in a very interesting time and has his own personality quirks that all blend together to create a really damn cool universe through Conan the Barbarian. And Conan himself is, while not really an insert in Howard of Howard's in a great many ways, he does exemplify something that Howard himself obviously felt, and that was going against society's norms. See, Conan is more often than not used as a device to point out the various hypocrisies of civilization of, of course, his time, but also modern civilization as Howard saw it. Because when you really think about it, though we have advanced in many ways as a society, a lot of the time, the so-called rules and regulations we impose ourselves in our jobs or in our own like, states of morality and how we deal with people, more often than not, a lot of those rules and regulations seem like thinly veiled attempts for us to just pretend we're not bastards, even though we very, very clearly are. And Robert E. Howard really goes after that in a lot of Conan stories. He is all about using Conan, a simple barbarian, as a device to cut down on the various intricate bullshit tactics that we impose on ourselves so that we can pretend we're civilized when actually a lot of the time we just use the veneer of civilization to mask the fact we're fucking bastards and we haven't really advanced in a lot of ways as far as we would like to think we have. But then there's a complete completely other side of this paradigm, and that is, of course, the primordial forces. So, magic does exist in Conan's world, but it is very dark magic. It's not over the top. This isn't about a dude where you can, where Conan will fight a wizard, and then the wizard will roll a d20 and summon an army of undead skeletons, and then Conan will just fight them. No, 
When a zombie is resurrected by a wizard in a Conan story, just looking at the fucking thing is enough to send a shiver down Conan's spine, and every time he sees one of these primordial forces and has to fight one of them, he feels like his own sanity is being ripped right out of his skull, despite being in the vicinity of these creatures. And more often than not, it is Conan's simpler mind, his more barbarian instinctual upbringing that lets him survive, whereas a more understanding civilized man who grasps like the various intricacies I already talked about will be driven insane because he can you know psychologically understand the full implications of what he's seen and always there is this big battle between civilization uh, as exemplified by much of Conan's adversaries and sometimes even his allies Conan's barbarism and these primordial forces and how the three of them all interact this is all really detailed in visceral purple prose. Sometimes the prose can be legitimately obtuse. Sometimes Howard does kind of get a bit too, I want to say, flowery for his own tastes. But it always, but most of the time rather, it feels visceral. It feels earned. It's almost like watching a written note of music. It has a really damn good flow to it. It has a lot of dread to it. Whenever Conan is terrified, you can feel the palpable uh, fear and terror, you know, seeping off the page. Um, he does a great job of, you know, describing the locales, really creating great sense of atmosphere. Conan, for all of his great abilities, when Howard wants you to feel he's vulnerable, the character legitimately feels like anything could kill him. And nothing really feels like this anymore. We don't even really design stories like this because every time we do a story, it's all supposed to be set in like chronological order. And then we follow a character's set arc from story to story to story until a end point. And this is, like I already explained, in many ways a complete subversion of that. You're reading various different big storylines of this dude's life out of order, and while he doesn't have necessarily arcs, you do see him mature and change over time, but the story never beats you over the head with it. And just for that kind of stuff alone, reading Howard's Conan is absolutely something you should do just for a breath of fresh air. And it's a testament to the writing of the prose, of the stories that are conjured here for the audience's amusement, that these stories, all of these stories, they all feel really damn good, even almost a hundred years after publishing. There are many stories that were once famed during their time that just don't hold up under scrutiny or haven't aged well at all. But like I said, it's a testament to Howard's abilities as a writer and his sensibilities and how he is informed by the society that he lives in and the time of he lives in and how he conveys that through a dark fantasy story that Conan the Barbarian still managed is to be a riveting read even all after a hundred years of existence. So yeah, if you want to read Conan, he is legally available for free to read on various points on the internet and there's even like a free application you can download that's also legal where you can read Howard's Conan including some of the incomplete stories. So if you want to give this seminal piece of fantasy work a try, you want to get away from like the big 500 page novels, the kind of generic dark fantasy stuff of the modern day and you want to go back to a simpler time when there was that raw passion to all of that stuff. Howard's Conan is absolutely a must-read, and if you're a fantasy fan and you haven't read this, then I don't know what the fuck you've been doing with your life.